Uncertainty is growing in the Russian presidential administration as the war against Ukraine continues. Kremlin elites are scared about the future. This was reported by the Russian opposition publication Medusa, citing sources close to the Kremlin. Judging by the article, even the top leadership of Russia does not know when and how the war with Ukraine will end. Because of this, the Kremlin does not dare to begin preparations for the upcoming elections to the State Duma of the Russian Federation, which are scheduled to take place in 2026. They do not understand what agenda the candidates will have to promote. It all depends on whether the special military operation will continue or not, the source said. According to him, if the war continues, candidates with aggressive, militaristic rhetoric will be needed, and if military actions are curtailed by that time, then moderate forces will be in trend. Overall, the mood in the Kremlin elites is now uncertain. Everyone wants the war to end, and even the hawks have started talking about peace, albeit on Russian terms. Everyone is tired and would like the war to end. No one wants an eternal war, for sure, the source said. However, on the other hand, the Kremlin elites do not understand what will happen after the end of the so-called special military operation. They are afraid of the future. Similar sentiments are also present among Russian oligarchs and businessmen. They want the end of special military operation, which prevents them from doing business with the West and from building long-term strategies. A source in the Kremlin claims that the Russian leadership is now more inclined to negotiate peace with Ukraine than it was several months ago. In the summer, they were allegedly determined to destroy Ukraine, but at the moment, such sentiments in the Kremlin have subsided. Putin reportedly wants to negotiate peace, but from a position of strength. According to the sources, Putin is still set on demanding that Ukraine refuse to join NATO and take full control over the captured territories. At the same time, he may allegedly compromise in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. Decisions will probably be made after the U.S. presidential elections. The Kremlin hopes for the coming to power of Republican Donald Trump, who supposedly can resolve the war in Russia's favor. The U.S. and South Korea on Thursday conducted a large-scale joint air exercise in response to North Korea's long-range ballistic missile launch, according to the South Korean military. Thursday's exercise included South Korean Air Force fighters such as the F-35A, F-15K, and KF-16, as well as U.S. Air Force and Marine Corps aircraft. The aircraft flew in formation to conduct various tactical flights and precision bombing training. South Korea's military said the Allies had also carried out airstrike drills against a mock mobile missile launcher with F-15K fighters earlier in the week. Russians on Wednesday commemorated the millions of people sent to prison camps by the late Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, marking the day of victims of political repression, the anniversary of the so-called Great Purge of 1937. A service was held and candles lit at the Church of New Martyrs and Confessors, 
at the Butovo site south of Moscow, where firing squads executed thousands of people during the height of Stalin's purges. The Butovo firing range was used for executions from 1930 until after Stalin's death in 1953. Some 20,000 people, including priests and artists, were killed there in 1937-38 alone. In Russia's far eastern city of Magadan, mourners gathered at the Mask of Grief monument for a commemoration ceremony, where names of known victims were read out. The monument is located at a former transit point through which all prisoners were sent to the camps of the region. A campaign of massive political repressions which occurred in the 1930s affected various parts of society, diverse ethnic groups, and different professions, from peasants to high-ranking government and military officials. Modern historical studies estimate a total number of around 1 million of purge deaths in 1937-38 alone. The reprisals continued almost unabated until Stalin's death in 1953.